Welcome back, Fish on Northwest. We are obviously here in the Bay Lab for this week's How To. Everything in the Bay Lab is presented by Max Lure. Check out everything Max Lure has going on at maxlure.com. Okay, Lure. with that, Bill, you brought some rods in. You brought some. Uh, this is this is a new flasher for you to use, isn't it? Isn't that something uh, that's only been around for a couple weeks? Right. Yeah, or yeah. a couple, several years, or ten years, or probably about. F I'm about six years into six years into it. Right? Into this one. Let's just start there. Let's just start with the red flasher. So, the the evolution of this and why you rely on it so much. So Buzz and I, we started doing some talking and looking of things on what happens when a fish comes up and sees something, right? Yeah. We found out that certain colors did certain things on certain presentations, hence daytime, you know, clouds, sunshine. It was different. Yep. The greens had a lot of action, but only when it was cloudy. The reds did something all around. So what we did is we started creating a pattern of, of, of a red plastic with red involved in it somewhere to give mm -hmm. a little bit. And then the pearl, the UV pearl, that was what was our main piece. Mm. And once I came up with, we, we did a, a flame red on one side mm -hmm. with a half pearl on the other and on red plastic. And then we put the whole presentation under the water. We switched every rod to it. Um, I started really catching um, salmon. On that one. Significantly more than anything else. I don't know what it was. It just happened. And greens, they work. But if it's red, my mantra is if it's red, it's dead. And mm. I've heard that from multiple fishing guides. And you use this in guides. multiple fisheries, all different water conditions, different levels of turbidity. Everywhere. You use all the time. Everywhere. Uh, yeah. And, you know, historically, yep. those that have followed Buzz in the past and talked with him, why not? He is very, uh, he has a lot of confidence in red and white. He does. Spinner, it's right? his I thing. Mean, it's his thing. It's the, it's red and white for Buzz Ramsey has been synonymous with Chinook fishing on multiple Chinook fisheries for years, right? Yes. And then now you, like you said, for at least six years are going for, and you can't, you can't hardly find these right now. These are really difficult to find. Yeah, um, they're, they're in high I, demand. They and work. Reason, they work. They've produced after year after year, and when you lose one, it hurts. How many did you bring uh, with you? Because you're not leaving with any. Just I, that. I had brought four. Okay, cool. <laughs> let's uh, let's talk a little bit about how you set up your so rig. You got a you got a weed uh, guard. A, uh, so a let's look at a of couple of things. Yeah, I don't have my 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 YBC's uh, rudder that does the same thing. Um, this is a VIP uh, product, and it's really works Slider. really good. Yep, this happens that. to grab on to the barrel swivel and prevent line twist nice. when any type of rotating flasher is going at it. Yeah. Whether it's mainly for this mm -hmm. pro troll or it's gonna be your your, your triangle flasher, right. this, this thing does a lot of work. Okay. So I got the only reason I do colors mm -hmm. is because uh, yet again, I've fished around a lot of people in my life. And when you use a lot of terminal tackle, i.e. barrel swivels, clips, you know, droppers, mm -hmm. you need to hide it. And the colors of beads, we all know it's just like steelhead. Beads make fish want to see things. Look at something, yeah. But there's times where you want to hide things too. Okay. And this is where the time in a troll fishery. Yeah. So I run that and then I run a, a what we call is our bumper line. Mm -hmm. This is what's going to happen above Which your flasher. About? This is about 16 inches for triangles. Okay. I like to go, and I brought a couple of these. I like to, these are just stuff that I've, I've, I've been sent and that I have. They work really well. These are 22 inches yeah. for pro trolls. Gotcha. And I like the 22 inches instead of the 24s because it makes the pro troll go that much faster. I mm -hmm. like a little bit more speed with my pro okay. trolls. We're not there yet. We're in cold water fisheries and pro trolls aren't going to do anything until we start to see some warm water. About 48? Yeah, 50 probably for pro trolls. Yeah. You'll see that Willamette take off at yeah. the end of April. And it's because the water hit a certain temperature and gotcha. people are going to start those. Yep. And uh, that's where your spin fish is okay. going to come into play. Thanks the new 2.5 with this is going to be money. You should have seen some of the stuff Jared was doing with this. <laughs> yeah. And Shane, yeah. they were killing it in right. warm water right. up at the oak tree in the right. Columbia. 
Get it done. It works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyways, back to some cold water. So we have our terminal gear. Um, we're going to connect our, draw, uh, our bumper line to the barrel swivel, okay? Yep. This is what, and you're going to have 200 pound test, or you mm -hmm. can use titanium rigging wire, or you can use some of YBC's stainless rigging wire rods. Um, that's a thing. And then you're going to have a dropper. Now I'm going to go into this dropper thing because this is actually pretty important. When you start looking at your dropper um, size, mm -hmm. We're going to look at something what we call the spread. Now, the spread is very important, and I want to show you guys, if I can get this clipped. Mm -hmm. The spread here is, is only important because of the angle of what you're trolling, mm -hmm. okay? And then the speed of what your dropper is going to be this is a dropper right here. Imagine a little line right here. Yep. The dropper is going to be dinging along on the sand, right? But it's going to create your gear to come down with that dropper at a certain length. Now, your dropper is going to play every little piece of this. If your dropper is too long, if it's too long, it goes below the flasher. Yep. The flasher is going to dig on the bottom of the river. And so is your... Yeah. Your bait's gonna drag sand. Mm -hmm. You're gonna lose herring if after herring. Too long. If your dropper's right. too long, and then you're gonna be dropping that that herring below where the fish are really gonna be able to do anything about it. Excellent. Now, you want to put this dropper. If I'm running a 16-inch bumper, yeah, my dropper is gonna be an inch longer. Is a 17-inch dropper, and it puts it right, right at, at the, the top tip of, your... of the flasher. Okay. Right yeah. at the very tip of that flasher. That puts your flasher right along the bottom of the river. It puts your bait right at the bottom of the river, which is where those fish are trying to swim. Because their whole goal is to get around and avoid working too hard, which means to get out of the current. They push against the shorelines or they go down below the thermocline of the current and that's going to be the first six inches of any type of... If I'm moving with a YBC slider up there versus the yep. uh, the Pro... Uh, or the Between VIP, the VIP right? dropper, yep, um, yep. or with, is, look, you can do it with just yeah, a, a barrel swivel. On beach, right? yep. Um, yep. Is the importance the if you know because that that could change my distance here so correct it may not be a 16 17 but at the end of the day if i hook it to whatever i have rigged up here correct if my dropper comes in contact with the tip of my rotating flasher i'm i'm there you're good right yep that's the key okay just want to make sure i spell that out so that is the key yep. to, to be how long a leader are you running on that, that you're so then now we're so now we're down here to tip we're running our our leader and you I, do you always use a midpoint of i your do on there i run a, mm -hmm. a bead chain in the middle of my leaders yeah. for the very reason that this bad boy is spinning yep. at a different speed than this, this bad one, boy yeah. and definitely at a different speed than that bad right. boy right right this keeps you sane yeah. because if you don't have that you're gonna go insane right and when you have six clients on the board yeah. the boat yeah and every one of them is tangled mm -hmm. you go insane really fast right and you really ask why, why am i guiding well, that's, that's why I avoid alcohol. <laughs> right. I'm not a big drinker. Right. So right. no. Anyway, so I, I got 14 I got 40 inch? pound. I use 40 pound. Okay. 40 pound liter. Uh -huh. I got 50 inches of liter right here. This is just my preference. Some people like a really long 60. Right. Some people like 30. But behind a triangle flasher, your best little bet is anywhere from 48 to 54. Okay. Yep. So you landed 50. I land at 50, like, that's okay. just my preference. Yep. That's what I like yep. to do. It's easy to tie up. Okay. It's an even number. I can just cut stretches of 50 inches and just go to town, start tying, or that's what I tell some people now to help me out with. Now let's get to the meat of the presentation, as in the herring. And let's get we to got some got of the cool stuff. By the way, this is, these are four or fives. Four or fives. I and like four or fives. I like red. Four Again. on the trailer. Again, red. Yep. And uh, let me ask you this. So that's probably, that looks like a rig that is suitable for a green label size herring. That is. We're going to have smaller herring this year. That's right. Get you can green. switch to a 3-4, but you can still use a 4-5 yep. like I do. What about spacing? Now spacing is where you're going to, now see for me, <laughs> I do it everything. I use fly tie backing. Oh, uh, and you have a sliding hook. And I have a really strong sliding, sliding hook. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 
Yep. Yeah, that'll now, be adjustable no matter what size bait you're fishing. Ding, ding, yep. ding. Yep. I got gotcha. you. Yep. Yeah, that's smart. Now in the barbels hook world, which is the Columbia, yeah, that's your friend, the sliding rig. Yeah. Barbless. Yeah. Both reasons to have the most chance for a hookup is yep. to have one hook that can slide in mm -hmm. case they bite you from the side, you get top bit, mm -hmm. that top hook's gonna slide down and still have an opportunity. Whereas if it was solid, they may miss that hook and they definitely will miss that bottom one. So okay. let's get into some nitty gritty of stuff. Yeah. This is the stuff that we are going to have this year. This is the size of herring that we are most likely going to see. Orange, orange, red. Okay. Maybe? I don't think we're going to see red. Orange, huh? No. Nope. Maybe by maybe by July okay. for the fall fisheries, we might see some reds or some 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 greens. This is the creme de la creme. Yeah. yeah. This is the this is like gold right now. Mm. This is what I have left from last year's fisheries. It's the it's hard to find. You can't yeah. you can't find it anywhere unless you have it left over. Right. And uh, so let's go over a couple of things about how we're going to switch things up this year, because we're going to have to get back to our roots. Now, when I was young, my grandpa and my dad mm -hmm. and some other old timers, we fished with whole herring. We did it in a way that everybody's kind of just like oh well i fish them whole and i use the sliding hook and i create a bend and then i just hook them like that mm -hmm. well that's not kind of how we did it we switched to a toothpick fishery right and uh, these toothpicks are what create your spin mm -hmm. and when you start looking at what a toothpick does these are three and a half mm -hmm. my favorite toothpick is a four inch because it works for anchovies and oh, good point. herring yeah but these work really well and our whole not to interrupt, but I'm going to. We had a question, uh, might have been last week, somebody was saying, do many guys actually use anchovy for spring chinook? Yeah. And I said, yes. yeah, I think, you know? And Especially on a year where there's not the right kind of bait, there's tons of anchovies. You got nothing to lose. You're fishing four rods, yeah. load two of them up with anchovy, two of them up with herring, and Correct. Buzz would tell us. But the fish tell us what they want, right? Yep. So, what yep. is the drag won't work? That is correct from the hecklers on the, <laughs> the hecklers. So, uh, okay, so let's talk about, yeah. So, here's our presentation. How we make this thing spin. We are, our knife doesn't get used when we go to these small fish. Right. We, we are going to go to, uh, uh, we're going to create our own spin. Mm -hmm. And when we do this, we're going to put a little bend in the fish like this. Mm -hmm. We're going to put our little toothpicky in and we're going to just lock that spin in like this. See this? Yep. That's our fish. Yeah. This actually is the next best tightest spin that you're going to get rather than cut plugging one of these, right. which we know create really tight spins yeah, yeah. and you're, all you, you have do, to do you do the same thing with your anchovy i yeah. do the exact yeah. the anchovy yeah. is actually a really good case it's because mm -hmm. it's longer yep. but you just bring this top hook right down here through the chin and right above the right eyes between the eyes right you see this right yeah. here yep this is your setup now me i have a really tight i lock it up right to about his tail now on on cut plug which we'll start right here go ahead and cut one of these and we'll go over how to do this too mm -hmm. so that is that is it i mean that that trailer hook is spinning freely to yes. size five in this case yep four and five your your slider if you will is just for that reason so like if i was to now uh pin an anchovy and put it on there that bait's going to be longer than this orange yes it sure will you're going to you're gonna link you're going to lengthen that up and to the to the, the back tail. of his tail yep. gotcha now on a on a on a on a cut plug presentation remember mm -hmm. on your cut plugs you can use everybody likes to use a cut plug box right not everybody. Not everybody. Uh, but yeah. I don't. I do not. I, so, I was taught a different way. Yeah. You put your knife right behind the gill. Mm -hmm. You create a 45 angle. Yep. Rotate 45 angles, 45 yeah. degree angle. Yep. Make your cut. This is your cut plug. You see you right yep. here, our angle. Two angles. Is perfect. Perfect. Yep. Okay. Nice and clean. Sharp knife. Correct. Have to have a sharp knife yep. for this. Now, on this, we grab the insides. Yeah. That. You got out of there. That slows down a spin but everybody thinks that the fish just love guts and they love to eat them well oh, no it's the spin and the, the so you come in here with your trailer 
You come into the side like this. Mm -hmm. Now, see that? That's bad. Scales coming off? You talked to, to, to David Johnson about this. Oh, boy. You all learned that herring scales can <laughs> prevent a bite from happening because the hair, the scale will prevent the hook going into the mouth. Really? Because Is that they're, tough? Yeah, they are. Uh -huh. It's crazy. Okay. Yep. Anyways, pull that through. And then we're going to put the tip of the hook right at the backbone, right? Yep. We're going to go back three or four ribs yep. just off to the left. Yep. And we're going to come side. right out the center. There you go. And now we want this hook. This is perfect. I lengthened it. You want a cut plug hook to be about an inch, the hook length after the, the tail, tail. Yeah. past the tail. Right. Because this hook on a cut plug is going to spin so much tighter mm -hmm. that it's going to rub right in here and you're going to lose precious flash from the scales. Gotcha. Don't want that. And so I'm that's, your, that's your setup. Yeah. Yeah. And both will spin uh, almost equally as far as tight, Correct. tight spin, drill yep. bit. And know, after the water. smelt leave of the river, how yep. many, how many fall Chinook and coho have you seen with, have you yes. ever cut up, cut open salmon stomachs and see how many cut plug heads are in these fish? Well, because they, handfuls yeah. of heads have come out of coho. It's just crazy. They so some guys like ocean. to pin them there right are back there. In the ocean because the fish are eating the heads. So some guys like to take that and put it right there. I'm not there. I'm I just saying it's mm -hmm. a thing. Mm -hmm. It gets done. Yeah, I don't do it. So here's what we're going to be seeing the most of this year. This is yeah. what's available. This is available from Harbor Herring. It's here in the Washington area and Point Defiance. They have a yep. lot of it. And Oregon just got a big shipment of it. And in the Astoria area, Gene at Tackle Time has cases of this stuff. And it's really perfect. I'm surprised he got it, but he did. It was really, really great. So this is what we're going to be using. You have, uh, you have confidence in that size herring pinned appropriately with a toothpick? I do. Yeah, one hundred percent. So, yeah. And you know, fishing is is a lot about confidence. Yeah. If I'm gonna go out there and be all nervous and stuff, and I'm gonna make a mistake or two, it's not gonna happen. This is confidence building stuff. This is this is really, this makes me comfortable. Okay. Final final question. Uh, when you're rolling bait as you are, you got six clients, and you're you're fishing bait on all of them. How often are you checking those rods? How often are you checking that bait? Well, we make a lot of runs. We pick yeah. up, we make a run back yeah, to the yeah. top, yeah. come back. So every run that I pick up, You're looking. I'm looking. If there's, if there's scale missing, mm -hmm. it's going. Yep. If one side has scales, the other, it's going. Yep. But if it's this year and we have precious greens that I'm fishing, yep. which are I do have some, yep. um, I'm going to fish them for quite a little bit longer. Sure. Um, then I, I want to show one. Do we have time for one yeah, more thing? Per, yep. Do we? Okay. Check this out. A lot of people don't know this, but if you don't hook this herring like this and you come here and you want to grab your, this is your backbone mm -hmm. where the tip of the rod, the the hook is, yep. come right into the side of that backbone, come through the ribs like Stay this. on top of it. And then look at that. The backbone is yeah. like right there. See how yeah. I'm pulling it out? Yeah, yeah. Well, I just pulled that out. Yeah. But that is that a really easy spin, way to huh? rig them. Yeah. Okay? And it holds on pretty good. A lot of guys can also do it like, like this. Right on through. And what it does is it locks your, 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 the cut you've made, yeah. it locks it up. Yeah. And that's actually a pretty little good way to do it too. That's been awesome. This is not, this isn't traditional though. So sure. it's just a different way to do it. Yep. Some guys like A, some guys like B. Gotcha. I like it all. Okay, good stuff. Uh, get your small herring, Harbor Herring. Uh, Patrick Gaffney, friend of ours here at Fish Out Northwest. Oh yeah, he has it. Yeah, we run it and uh, yep. he, he takes care of us. So uh, definitely. Yep. Uh, looking forward to getting my hands on some of that. When I run out of my green, right. I'm going to show you which freezer in the back room that my herring is in. So, because uh, you're leaving and I'm going to keep my bait. Does everybody want his address? <laughs> Text me. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, all right. Going to jump out for a quick break. We're going to be back in studio with the Bills and we're going to close out uh, this train wreck, or uh, <laughs> as it's called. Damn. All right. We'll be back right here, Fish on Northwest.